Welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. And this is episode 122. It's entitled, Things Work Simpler Than We Think They Do. And what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be sharing with each of you guys some of the insights that I've had recently that have totally changed my life. One of the questions that, you know, or one of the things that I was, I was thinking about as I was talking to one of my mentors was kind of what's held me back. And so I want to first of all share what is it that's held me back for so long? I felt like I had to be guided and directed to do every tiny thing. I felt I had to be... Com- guided and directed to make every little call. I felt like I had to be guided and directed to go to which meeting to go to, to and everything else. But I realized like that's not the nature of the way things work because even when I am told exactly what to do, there's plenty of times I don't do it. You know, every tiny step that you take gets you closer to your destination. Y- you might not even realize that, but it does. You know, so the very, today I'm going to talk about the nature of just how things work and, and what I've really begun to see for myself. Number one, it's not my job to be successful. Now, what I mean by that, I can show up all that I want. I can do as many podcasts as I want. I can call as many people as I want to create new clients. But at the end of the job, I can't control how successful I am because that takes another person. It takes them saying, hey, I'd love, I'd love to work with you. I'd, I'm interested in talking with you. Can you help me with this? Now, funny enough, there was an uh, there was a analogy given in a conference talk entitled, I, I don't remember the name of the conference talk, but it was by Neil A. Anderson. And he talked about the spirit, like a spiritual vending machine. And and how so many people think that God works like a spiritual vending machine. It's like, okay, well, Heavenly Father, I'll show up and I'll do this thing if you do this thing. Or I'm going to put in this this many good works and you're going to give me this. Now, it doesn't work like that, but I think it works a little bit like that. Now, let me share what I mean. I believe that it's my job to go forward and do everything in my power everything that occurs to me to do the best of my ability in order to get what it is that I want. You know, if I want to create an incredible coaching business that's changing the world, I can't sit and do nothing. Now, sometimes we think that we'd love to sit and do nothing. And I have two analogies for you. One is from an episode of Twilight Zone called A Nice Place to Visit, which a man is given everything one could ever want and he's not happy because there's no more challenge in his life. And number two, probably one of the funniest, my favorite examples lately of what does it look like when Heavenly Father gives us everything without us doing anything? If you watch Ralph Breaks the Internet after the movie is over, Probably about five or so minutes after it's over, there is a little clip. And if you go watch that, it just shows such a perfect example of what it would be like if if God continually did everything for us and provided us with an abundance of blessings if we did nothing. The gist of it is we would become spoiled and we wouldn't really enjoy them. You know, and, and you, can wa- you can watch the little clip, but w- what it's of is a, of a bunny and, that gets pancakes and the kitty that gets milkshakes. And then he just starts overfeeding the bunny over and over and over <laughs> until the bunny is so full he actually explodes. <laughs> and so I, that's really a great example of what it would be like. Like the Lord wants us to do the work. What, what is the... like? When I work with my clients, we generally go back and we explore the nature of the thing. Because, you know, for example, I know many of you out there may struggle with, you know, whether it's your parents or your friends or everybody thinking you should live your life a certain way. And you really want them to just accept you for who you are, but they don't. Well, that's not up to you. And and, and sometimes we think it's like, oh my goodness, if I was more famous, if I was more successful, if I did everything they wanted me to do, then they would just accept me for who I am. 
That's not up to you guys. You don't have a choice in that matter. You're trying to control what somebody else thinks about you, and it's none of your business. I mean, has it worked so far? Has everything that you thought you needed to do to be accepted by people around you worked? No. And it's not that they don't accept you. Everyone around you just has different ideas and hopes and dreams for your life. I know that sounds silly, but every one of us does it too. We all want so much more for people around us. And guys, I, I am so guilty of this. I mean, so many times I've, you know, in, in the many years that I've been coaching, I, I've wanted so much more for my clients than they've even wanted for themselves. And I've learned that I really need to ask permission and I need to, you know, invite them to do different things. But at the end of the day, their life is up to them. And it's not on me. It's not, there's no pressure on me to change that. And so there's no, there's, you don't have to change the people around you. You can love them and accept them for exactly who they are. Because that's how you want people to accept you, right? So in one hand, it's like we're wanting and expecting people to change to accept, for us to accept them. And they're one, and we think they have to change and accept us. Or I, I think you guys get kind of the idea of my pointing to. You know, Jesus Christ, the Savior, was our example in all things. He didn't go up to people and say, you know what? I would just love you a little bit more if you weren't, insert whatever you struggle with here. Or insert whatever you think somebody else struggles with there. You have no idea the battle that even the people around you are fighting. Even if, it's, even if it's your parents. Your parents have their own hopes and dreams, not just for you, but for themselves. And some of those dreams haven't come true. In everybody's life, that's the case. And so we can be a little bit more patient. We can be a little bit more understanding with those people around us. You can even, if they'll let you, you can even talk to them about their dreams and their goals and everything. You know, every one of us is at such a different stage of life. We have to stop worrying about where everyone else is. When they want to be helped, awesome. I mean, you know, according to the, the way they portray it in the movie The Chosen, in, in the episodes of The Chosen, the Savior had lines of people there trying to be healed from him. But not everybody. And, and that didn't happen like instantaneously. It probably took a little bit of time to gather and build. All he wanted to do was serve the person in front of him. And, and if he could serve that person in front of him to the best of his ability, which is pretty amazing because he he, he's the savior, then maybe even his being with somebody is serving them. Maybe the people around you, maybe even those people that you think want so much more out of your life, actually do struggle with a lot of things on their own. Maybe they have a lot of their own demons that they've never been able to face or fight. Now, we don't have to, they don't have to fight those. They don't have to do that. Maybe we could all be more understanding. Because when you stop thinking that it's their job, to change and that they need to accept you to make you feel better. And if you ever feel unaccepted, Heavenly Father and your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ love you for exactly who you are. But even they still want you to experience the most you can out of life. But it's your choice, it's up to you. Heavenly Father and the Lord who understand the nature of the world because they created it. And they understand all these governing principles that govern our lives. They understand and know that at the end of the day, no matter what they do, everybody has agency. No matter how much they want to bless us, no matter how much they want to enrich our lives, we have agency. And no matter how much you want to help people around you, Maybe they're your children. Maybe they're, maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your friends.
You can't. Do you know the best way you can influence somebody's life? Get engaged in your own. Instead of being that person that says, you know what? If only my parents were different, if only my other relationships were different, I would be different. You're a grown person. Nobody is holding you anymore. You have a choice. No, nobody's holding you back anymore. And they were never holding you back to begin with. They were trying to do the best job they knew how. And who knows, they might have raised you a lot better than they were even raised. You know, it, it, for whatever reason, the song R.E.M., uh, Everybody Hurts, is coming to my mind. Everybody hurts. Everybody cries. Everybody around you is doing the best they know how, given their thinking in the moment. So what is our job when it comes to relationships? Love the people around you. Set boundaries if people aren't the best to have around you. That's it. Your job is not to change anybody. I mean, even as a coach, I can't change anybody. I have, I have no control of that. I can show up, and if they choose not to let anything in that, they, that I say or that I share with them, or especially that the Spirit shares with them, there's nothing that can be done. I mean, they, they've talked about it for years. They said, you can, you can drag a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So why do we keep struggling? Why do we keep worrying about that? Why in the world are we wasting all of our time and all of our energy trying to do things that don't need to be done? Now, shifting gears a little bit, and some of the things I've realized for myself, and we're going to kind of go in a couple of different ways today. In a relationship, there is nothing you can do to force somebody to like you. I mean, even the genie on Aladdin says it. He's like, I can't bring people back from the dead. I can't make people fall in love. And there's a third one that I'm, I'm spacing out on. Oh, I can't kill anybody. And so we can't force somebody to love us. You can't force the people around you to accept you. And so when it comes to relationships, you can't force a person to love you. You can even be inspired. You can have all the inspiration in the world from Heavenly Father that's pointing you in that direction. If it's not there, it might not be there. And, you can, and at that point, you can only go back to Heavenly Father and ask Him for His guidance and His direction and, and that thing in your life. And then you just got to trust it, whatever it is. So what is your job in a relationship? Your job is to make yourself as attractive as possible in every sense of the word. Make, your, make yourself as attractive as possible physically. Mentally, emotionally, socially, financially, and, ever, and every other Ali. <laughs> That's your job. That, the nature of a relationship is it takes two people to be interested in each other. Well, go figure. When you start getting really engaged in life and in the world, you got a lot of people that become interested in you. You know, when, when somebody becomes a mover and shaker in the world, they get a lot of people interested. That's just the way it works. That is the game. I mean, I'm I'm guilty of that too. You know, I've seen people and you know, and I've I've even seen people that have gotten like into a sort of a relationship that that person has begun to blossom so much. I remember one time, and this was years ago, I asked this girl that had this awesome energy out and she was just like she was fun, she was playful, she was awesome. And I asked her out, and she's like, oh, man, I'm dating someone. And you know what I told her? I was like, well, you know, whatever, it's, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Because apparently that relationship is bringing the best out of you. You know, and, and, and I think she might have even smiled when she was talking about it and like, yeah. So make yourself as attractive as possible. You know, that, that, is all your, that is your job when it comes to relationships. What else is your job for the, in, when it comes to the nature of relationships? Your job is to show up. If you want to go out on a date with somebody, it definitely helps to ask them. Just saying. You know, I don't care if you're a girl, if you're a guy. Ask the person you want to go out with. What's the worst they can do is say no. 
oh, well, you, you've heard plenty of people say no before. It's okay. You can get over it. And I don't mean that in a sense you have to get over it. I mean, just in a sense of the, the nature of things as over time, things heal and we feel better. But there's something about showing up in life that is so incredibly exciting and showing up in dating. So what else, what else is your job in dating? To be still and actually listen to the person. When you actually listen to the person, they're actually sharing things with you that might be really important in their life. And when you forget those, it doesn't go very well. But plenty of times we're having, we're, we're overthinking whatever they're saying and we're just sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to say next? That's not even your job. Whatever, is, whatever you're going to say next is going to come. But overthinking about what you're going to say isn't really going to work because you're already thinking about the next best thing to say. So, you know, generally the happier and more joyful you are, the more people that are going to be interested. And some people you might be too much for. Those just aren't your people. And you don't have to worry about that. I know there's plenty of people out there I might be too much for. But you know what? When I hold that back and when I don't allow that excitement to show through, I'm not very happy. So I, I choose me instead of them. And I would invite you to do that as well. But the funny thing that happens is the more people that you ask out, the closer and closer you get to what you're looking for. I'm not saying you have to go out with people that you don't want to go out with. I don't believe in that. I really don't. You can do whatever you want to, but at least for me, that's, that's not really something that I choose to do. So you can p put yourself out there. But what, what do I recommend not doing when it comes to dating and like the nature of dating? I don't recommend, you know, like taking so long to feel sorry about it. And, and why do I say that? Because you can't control it. And you want somebody that really, really loves you for me. It's like there's an old song. It was called Hey Leonardo by Blessed Union of Souls. It's like, she loves me for me. You know, not because I look like, pop, like paparazzi or whatever, whatever he says in there. But the gist of it is you want somebody to love you for you. Not somebody you have to change for. I don't recommend changing to impress somebody. It doesn't work. You know, become the best version of you and you're going to have plenty of amazing choices around you. Like, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you feel like you look like because there's always going to be somebody prettier than you. Yes. I, there's, there's a phrase that I love that actually one of, I, I've stolen from one of my clients that is just so beautiful that says... I don't want to discourage you, but I want to be honest. There is always going to be somebody out there that's prettier than you or handsomer than you or has bigger muscles than you. Like, it doesn't matter how hard you work. It doesn't matter what you do. You just want to find the best person for you. And you, and, and you can still think that you're amazing and incredible. You know, I was watching right before this. I was watching March Madness. I just watched Furman take out Virginia. And, and it was awesome because the player, you know, if you guys want to watch the highlights, but at the end of the game, there was a three pointer that was made with like two seconds left. And the player that made the shot hadn't made a single three all game. I only watched the end, so I don't know if he made any other shots, but he did say in his post game interview, he hadn't made a single shot, but you know what? He went in and took that shot and. You know, and nothing but net, like just nailed it straight through. And his in in his interview afterwards, he was like, you know, I think they may have even mentioned like you didn't, you know, you didn't even make a shot. And he's like, you know what? I, I just knew it was going in. I, I believed in myself. I bet on myself. You guys, bet on yourself. There's no amount of thinking less of yourself that's ever gonna make you feel better or that's ever gonna make anyone more attracted to you. There's a great quote by the Scottish mystic Sidney Banks that says, humility isn't thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. You know, get, get yourself ready. Get yourself anxiously engaged in life. 
in whatever ar- areas that you want to be in. I heard something gorgeous this morning on, on a meeting with my mentor, Michael Neal, where he said, all the thoughts that come to us, you know, it's almost just like, um, like almost like a, I'm trying to remember the word he used, like a personal assistant, you know, he's like, oh, a personal shopper. That was what he used. You know, he came and, you know, it's like, oh, you know, they bring you a pair of a, a shirt and they say, hey, do you, do you like this? And you're like, no. Well, can, what if you thought of your thoughts and even the people that come into your life like that? It's like, hey, do you want to go with this person? No. You want with this person? I mean, it's like all those dating apps, all your, like, you're scrolling through and you're either interested or you're not interested. And it's okay to not be interested. There's 6 billion people in the world. Just because... You know, you want to do something nice for somebody doesn't mean you have to go out with them. You can be really nice to people. You can be kind to them. I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying you get to choose. You get to decide whatever way you want to live in this life. So once again, the very nature of dating is that. Like, there's going to be some people you're interested in that aren't interested in you. There's going to be others you're interested in that aren't interested that hold on there's going to be some people you're interested that you're interested in that aren't interested in you there's going to be others that are interested in you that you're not interested in them and then there might be other some weird variations of that it's okay guys you know i, I want to talk a little bit about the nature of thought and even the nature of how the spirit speaks to us i was listening to something recently and somebody was sharing, you know, somebody that has, has since, uh, they, they, were, they were talking about different ways that, you know, they, they were talking about things that they thought were from the spirit that it turned out not to be. And, and, and I'm not going to say specifics, but they mentioned some pretty bizarre things like, you know, spin around four times and, you know, jump up and touch your toes or you know, just like weird stuff like that. That is not the spirit. That is the crazy leprechaun thinking. That is the adversary. Sometimes we want to feel the spirit so much that we misunderstand what it is. The spirit is a still small voice that speaks to you in this, the faintest of whispers the tiniest of ideas. And most people don't hear an audible voice. I mean, some people every now and then do, but most times it's the faintest of whispers. You know, there's a story in the Book of Mormon about Jesus Christ coming and visiting the Americas. You know, and as he's descending from the sky, or even right, right about that time, you know, there, these p- people that were around the temple heard a voice and they looked around to see where it came. And it wasn't until the third time that they understood the voice which they heard. So don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're not hearing it. When we put all that pressure on ourselves, that's, that's where we're going overboard. Trust me, if the Spirit wants to speak to you, it will speak to you. And it will be through a spirit of peace, a spirit of joy, and every now and then a spirit of, hey, stop that. (laughs) But it's very direct sometimes. But the spirit is generally not going to have you do something that seems really bizarre. And especially if you feel a yucky feeling when you have those thoughts, that is the spirit saying, hey, this is not my thought. This is not from me. You know, there's, there's a story in the Bible that says, you know, a- after a man plants his field, that there's tares that grow up. And I, I don't know if you know this, but tares, wheat and tares actually look very, very similar. If you, if you want to Google it, you can see a picture. They look really similar. And, and in the Bible, it says, you know, an enemy hath done this. So I, I really do believe strongly that you know, we have Heavenly Father that directs us for the good, and we have the adversary that seeks to mess us up at every little turn. And you get to decide whatever it is that you believe about that, but I just don't believe that on 
I'm going to personally have thoughts that would hurt myself. You know, so any thoughts that you're having that just seem off, off or strange or just kind of like, huh? Not that don't leave you peace. They're not from Heavenly Father. No matter how intense they seem. Sometimes the more intense and the more urgent feelings are, the more they are not from Heavenly Father. So if you've felt that you haven't been able to feel the Spirit, I want you to know that especially if you're trying to live a good life, you probably hear the Spirit far more than you would ever imagine. It's just you're so used to it that you don't realize it. It's just that beautiful feeling that we get to spend time in. The Spirit is amazing. So if you're having thoughts again that are just kind of off, that are kind of strange, that are kind of weird, not from the Spirit. The Spirit, especially when He gives us really important revelation or insight, it it comes with a beautiful feeling. I, I really do know that to be true. Now let's talk a little bit about just the nature of life. The nature of life is we go through challenging things. That doesn't mean that God is punishing you. In the book, The Screwtape Letters, it talks about how some of the, some of the children that God loves the most go through the most trials. So if you feel like you're going through the most trials, maybe you're just one of the ones he loves the most. And sometimes those things are really hard. But no matter, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, like I shared before how two weeks ago or two months ago, I was in a car accident and, you know, I've been recovering and recovering. And, you know, recently my, my physical therapist kind of, I kind of told him some of the stuff I was doing and he, he actually recommended that I don't play the guitar right now. You now my, the guitar strap digs right in to the, the part that's trying to heal and I didn't listen for a while. And then a couple of days ago, I just kind of was playing and afterwards it hurt really bad. And I finally just said, okay, if that's, if that's what you want right now, then if, and, and not even that's what God wants. It's just, okay, if that's, if the nature of doing this to get me better is that, then I'm, I got to do that. I've got to, you know, sacrifice the guitar for a little bit. Well, I really do want to get myself back in good shape and back in, and back in great health. I can't control that an accident happened. It was actually a perfect storm where there was almost nothing I could have done to avoid this accident. There was a car running a red light that came behind another car I couldn't even see. Like, there's nothing I could have done to avoid this. Yes, one of you out there is probably saying, well, you couldn't have driven that way. Yeah, okay. I guess. But the Lord is in the storm. He really is. And I, and I really believe that. I believe that no matter what happens, the Lord can turn it into good. You know, and also just a, just a friendly reminder, if you don't wear your seatbelt, wear your seatbelt. Fortunately, I was, but plenty of times I don't. And, and so even those little things like, hey, Joseph, put your seatbelt on. You know, it's those little things, those little nudging, those whisperings, those everything that the Lord is constantly giving us. We just get to decide whether we're going to listen or whether we're not. Now, if you've been through a hard experience, yes, that does, that, that does stink. It, it, is, it is not fun. I, I went and tried to play um, basketball last week. And it did not go well. I, I don't mean in a sense of like, yeah, my, my shots were actually pretty good seeing I had a, how I hadn't played in two months. It didn't go in the, in, well in the fact of I, I was dizzy. I, and there was a point I even just like kneeled down on the court. Um, my, my body had not recovered well enough. Now, I could be really upset. And I want you guys to know I actually was. I was upset. I was frustrated. I was scared. You know, I know other people close to me have been in car accidents and they've complained about neck pain ever since. 
Now, I'm, I'm hoping that I fully heal, but that's not up to me. It's up to me to do my exercises, which are kind of a pain every day. It's up to me to listen to my doctor, but I have no control. And when we accept that we have no control, life becomes simpler. When you accept going back to this, you know, you know, dating and even um, the other stuff we were talking about, you have no control. You're, you, we have to accept whatever is going to happen because we can't control it. Now, I can still be optimistic. I can be hopeful. Of course, yeah. I'm going to do what it takes and I'm going to recover the best that I can. You know, but plenty of times we want a miracle f from the Lord without doing anything. Miracles oftentimes are just giant things that happen over taking a bunch of small steps. For many, it would seem like a miracle to get to New York City. But if you keep walking and taking steps, you'll get there. So the nature of it, if you've been through something that wasn't your fault, maybe it's even been something darker, like, you know, you know, rape or one of those other awful things. I, I don't know what it's been for you. Maybe, maybe it's been a spouse that cheated on you. Maybe it's been, you know, just e even a significant other being unfaithful. I don't know what it's been for you. You can't control what changed, what, what happened. You can't change that. You don't have to stay with them. Byron Katie, in her book, Loving What Is, shares, you know, when you argue, argue with reality, you lose 100% of the time. So if you keep arguing with your situation and being frustrated with whatever you're going through, you're just going to get more and more into that. The only thing that serves you is asking the question, okay, what, what is it that I can do? What do I want to do? And getting clear. You know, the, you know, the very nature of anything we're trying to get better at, the more you spend time doing it, the better you're going to get. That's just the nature of doing anything. There's a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson that says, that which we persist in doing becomes easier for us to do. Not that the nature of the thing is changed, but that our power to do is increased. So the very nature of the thing never changed. You know, learning Mary had a little limb on the piano never got easier. I just got better. You know, learning songs on the guitar, the song itself never changed. I got better. The nature of the thing never changes. The nature of getting into a relationship never changes. A relationship is what it is. You know, even going into business, if some of you are in business for yourself, Plenty of times we worry about how to get the next client, how to, how to get more clients. The nature of it is find a way to connect with people. The more times that I show up each day, the more people I'm going to connect with. And after a while, that's going to build momentum. I really do believe that Heavenly Father is actively waiting for us, but we have to show up and do the work. And once again, with the bunny and the pancakes, if he keeps feeding us awesome things over and over without us doing anything, we're going to metaphorically explode. I mean, have you seen all these people that deal with success in Hollywood and other places that just can't deal with it, that turn to drugs and alcohol and everything else? Like, there is a nature of everything. And everything's going to happen for you exactly when it happens. I'm I'm currently in the Mesa Easter pageant, and one thing that was shared at a recent meeting was, you are exactly where you need to be, and you're exactly where you need to be to learn the things that you need to learn in order to get to the next place in life, but it doesn't mean that you can't be happy now. It doesn't mean that you can't enjoy your life in this moment. So once again, the nature of business, along with the nature of everything else, is the more you show up. The more time you, and attention you put into your business, the better it's going to grow. The more time and attention I put into growing the podcast, the more it grows. The more time and attention I put into growing the business, the more the business and the podcast grow. 
Whatever it is that you want to create in your life, start creating it. And you're going to be amazed at what will happen. But you have to show up. Because I'm sharing things with you today that these are some of the most powerful things that I've realized in the past five and a half years of my life. And I know some of you guys might think, this sounds so simple, this sounds so easy, and it's taken me years to finally comprehend. I, you know, There's a great quote by T.S. Eliot that says, it, it, it says, enlightenment is arriving at the same place and knowing it for the first time. It doesn't matter how many circles you've walked in in your life. Like, p- part of life is just having the same lesson over and over and over until we get it. So I'm trying to save you a lot of time. Don't spend so much time worried about how things you think are working out or not working out. Just show up. We we focus so much more time on the problem than, than the solution. Okay, cool. This happened to me. This person did this thing to me. This isn't right. This isn't fair. Nobody cares because everybody else has been through something. I remember one time, this was years ago, but... We had a decently successful business opportunity that at one point was valued for like $1.5 million and I got kicked out of the company. And for a while, I told everybody that would listen how bad that was. And you know what I realized? Nobody cared. No, nobody cared whatsoever. You know, whatever people you're trying to look for and serve, you're going to find. You know, even like God just wants us to try. The Lord loves effort, for effort brings rewards that can't come otherwise. That's a quote by Russell M. Nelson, a religious leader of mine that was also a famous heart surgeon for years. Like, all we have to do is show up. Show up and try. That's it, guys. Show up and try to do something you want to do. And keep showing up and trying. And believe it or not, you'll get better. That's the whole purpose of all the videos I post on social media of me getting better at songs on the guitar. It's not just so I can look at myself playing guitar videos. I, I, I don't have to record them to do that. <laughs> I, can just, I can just play. Stop worrying. Start, stop arguing with everything that's happening in your life and start moving in the direction that you want to move. If you want to write a book, start writing a book. If you want to... Get in a relationship, then start talking to people, start flirting with people, start, you know, just connecting with people. I mean, I even tell people, hey, go to, you know, go to like a a Starbucks or a smoothie place or wherever and just start saying hi to people. And and you can even go to one that in a place of town that you'll never see those people again and say hi and even ask for numbers. It's actually great for a, a business practice too sometimes. The more you show up, the easier things get. Not because the nature of the thing has changed, but because your capacity to do it has changed. So whatever it is that you've been looking at differently, look at the very nature of it. Whether it's a relationship, look at the nature of that. Whether it's your business that you're trying to get going, whether it's a relationship, whether it's understanding the spirit better. Like whatever it is that you're trying to do, Go and do it, and the more you show up and try, the better you'll get. So whatever you've, that you felt inspired to do as, as a result of listening to today, just go do it. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, It's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, one of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on and you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes, so you can go to the website happynsingle.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. 
Now, at the same time, if you would prefer a more one on one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and and just kind of the stuff going on in your world, then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one on one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the it's possible guy and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.